Hey there, it's John Barry555, and welcome to another video. In this video, well, I thought I would actually make a tier list, my first tier list I'm actually ever doing, where I'll be ranking the presidents of the United States of America. This tier list will be linked down below if you would really like to... This tier list will be linked down below if you would like to use it as well for your own tier list. So, of course, I got the S and all, S to F tier. I've also added a two recent tier. So, there's going to be... Uh, at least three presidents haven't decided, you know what, uh, not, neither Bush, Bush Jr., um, he's not going to be on that because I really don't remember his presidency that well, I was still a young child, and in fact, I do remember some, but I don't remember him, I remember him being president, but not him as president, unlike with Obama, Biden, and Trump. All of those are going in that too recent category because they're too recent to judge. There's too much of the recency bias, so they're not going to get ranked here, and I'm ranking these presidents all on their ability as president, not them as an overall person, because, well, some people will get F2 if we do that, and some people will get S2 if we do that, because the bias is like, I'll just say it, if we were ranking solely based off of what I think of them as a single president as a whole, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt's gonna be number one, um, I know there's certain things like, yeah, he probably could have done better, or this and that, and, but he's just such an interesting and fascinating person to research and read about in history. He gets bumped up to the top. But since I'm trying to take away some of my biases and look at more of them as president, well, not going to be factoring. Though, I'm going to admit, both of the votes are going to be high on my list. So, there's that. So, we're going to begin with, and I've already gotten the bushes mixed. Is that, is that, um, which bush is that? Cause that's not good that I can't remember which bush is there. Um, thankfully I do have a phone so I'm going to look this up. I think that's the, the George Bush. Yeah, I know, really helpful. Because there's, because both of them were George Bush. Okay, so that is, is Bush W, four, number 43. Yeah, that's probably a better way of looking at President 43. So that is good. So yeah. So where am I going to put him? Well, I I'm going to just admit it. I think um in the twenty uh, zero zero. I don't know why I was saying that, but the two thousand election was a very close election, and I will say that I often wonder what how things would have been different if Al Gore was president. And when evaluating Bush for number forty three, that does play a role into where I put him. Because I will say this, I don't think Gore would have handled 9-11 any differently than Bush. Same thing with Katrina. Um, if anything, maybe Gore would have been slightly more cautious than Bush. Again, American foreign policy from both Republicans and Democrats pretty much ever post-World War II and even before that were largely identical. And even still today, they're very similar despite what both parties, but most so in my experience, the Republican Party wants you to think. Um, but yeah, so, so there, 9-11 would have been handled the same, and maybe Bush would have been more cautious, probably, oh, I mean, sorry, Gore would have been more cautious, we probably wouldn't have gotten into Iraq, and even if we did, it probably would have been much more contained. Um, Afghanistan, I mean, no matter what, that was going to be a debacle, no matter who was president, once we got in there, um, history has shown that time and again, you, you can even go back to when the British were trying to take over Afghanistan. Um, for some context there. But yeah, so overall, I will say this. The reform policy-wise, their legacies would be largely the same as I think Gore would have been better. I know that's not out in history, but with Bush, I think sometimes putting in these hypotheticals of how this one individual would be important to consider. Also, I will have to say that, also I can say that domestically, they probably would have been slightly different, but not too different except for Gore would have cared more about the climate and the environmentalism than Bush 43, so yeah. So for now, um, unless I can think otherwise, Bush 43, well, he is going at C, middle of the road, because yeah. Okay, next up is, well, what do you know, for the president before Lincoln, Buchanan. Yeah, he's in F2, no doubt about that. Well, sure, th there was probably nothing he could have done to prevent the Civil War, but what's probably worse, is that he did nothing to present the, prevent the Civil War. 
I'm not saying that he could have done a better job or that he he might have been able to accomplish something. No, let's be real. There's nothing he could have actually done to fix the issue, to prevent the Civil War. There was nothing he could have done. The, he just did nothing. But I would say this about the only good thing he could have done out of that. Um, so it's something I think he would have accomplished that if he had tried. Oh, actually, I'm losing my train of thought though. But one thing I think he did that was good is by doing nothing, he kept the status quo. He kept the Fed in control. The federal government remained in control of federal property. The, the army, the marines, the, the uh, navy, they kept control of federal facilities except for a few cases where they were pushed out. But by essentially doing nothing, he allowed Lincoln to maintain that policy of federal land, so the federal forts, were still federal forts. Therefore, if they were attacked, that would be an act of aggression against the federal government, which allowed Lincoln to prosecute the Civil War and actually fight against the rebellious states that were seeking to preserve the institution of slavery. So by doing nothing, he did make it possible for Lincoln to do something. Next up, so yeah, while I did sing some phrases of Buchanan there at the end, he still did nothing. So, he is F2, no, without a doubt. So next up, we have Jimmy Carter. And I gotta say, he's, a, he's had a very successful pro, post-presidency, very likable guy, you know, just a good guy. But the problem is, he wasn't the best president. Now, I will say this. His administration did a lot of the groundwork for, you know, with the, um, with the Iran hostage crisis. His administration did all the groundwork um, but Reagan was the one who was president when they returned, so Reagan gets all the credit. So, I gotta say this. He did do some, get some stuff accomplished. He did some groundwork. Um, but as a whole, yeah, he wasn't probably, he wasn't the most effective president. But I can I put him at F2? I just can't. He's too nice of a guy. I know I'm trying to rank him only up as being, as the job as president. But he was still, even as president, he was a good guy. He wasn't, you know. He wasn't making bad mistakes, just wasn't the right guy to be president. And that's probably the best thing you can say about Jimmy Carter. Now, I will say this as well. Um, he probably should give more credit for some of the stuff he did accomplish. So, I'm for now actually going to put him at D. I don't like it. I kind of want to put him at, an, at C tier at least. But that's, I think, my personal bias towards him as a person coming into effect. So, yeah, I have to acknowledge that stuff, that those are things that we have to consider. Next up, well, we have the guy with a mustache, and so that really doesn't... I, I'm looking up presidents just to make sure I don't get them mixed up at all. Yes, Chester A. Arthur. Uh, Chester A. also. I have literally forgotten his presidency. But he took over for Garfield, so there's that. Um, so, yeah, um... Let's see, he was president from 81 to 85, 1881 to 85, let's be specific. Um, let's see, I'm you know, taking office. Oh, he did civil service reform, so that's good. I do like that. Um, yeah. Um... So that is a good thing, it's apparently some naval reform. But in all honesty, his presidency does not leave a lasting impact. So, C tier. Um, he seemed like pretty good. And next up, well, we have Grover Cleveland. The only president to serve two terms non-consecutively. And, well, I have to say, again, like Cleveland, I don't have a huge listing of his being president at the top of my head. Um, so that does not help him. No, got to be frank. If, the, if a president's history, if they're a bit at time as president, is just not well remembered, it's probably not the best thing. Um, now, obviously, he was well liked enough that he got a second term. But, yeah, I just don't know enough off the top of my head, you know, what he stood for, what he accomplished. That I just can't effectively re-rate him. So once again, C tier. You'll find this a lot for me. Where presidents where 
I just don't know where to place. I'll probably default to C tier. It's just the way I go. Um, but if that happens, probably should I create another category of, you know what? Let's actually make a quick edit real quick. Um, we're going to add a row above to recent and we're going to call it not enough knowledge. Again, this will be linked down below. Um, let's go with a slightly darker gray. And okay, wh oh, what happened to the two recent two? Ah, uh, okay, that's what I did. Okay, let's correct this. Okay, good. Um, that's gonna be not enough knowledge. Okay, there we go. And let's change the color on that. Um, how about a nice pink? There we go. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move these guys down there as well. Just gotta be honest about that stuff. So let's go up and that's the uh, real quick. Let's just throw Trump, Obama, is Biden on here yet? Okay, they don't have Biden on here. Oh, I didn't get Biden on here, but if he was, he will also go into that too recent category. Um, so yeah, we're going to cover the S tier for now and pause the A just so we can keep the pro the picks down below. I um, probably need to adjust my margins a little bit for the next time. And next up, we have Bill Clinton. Well, I would say this: he was a likable person. He just his morals kind of sucked, but his time as presidency was, I mean. The Clinton 90s, um, the 90s were generally considered a pretty decent time for American history. I know there was still a lot of issues going on, but as a president, Clinton, except for his, you know, his infidelity and all that, and his abuse of the power dynamics with Monica Lewinsky there, um, his presidency as a whole was not that bad. In fact, I would say as a president, he was beaten, but because of his actions in office and kind of, you know, putting disgrace on the office of the presidency, he cannot get beat here. So, only, because his presidency was overall, I, no, not as an uneventful presidency, but a stable, a solid presidency, he's going down to the D tier. I probably would put him higher, but his actions as president in abusing his, basically ab abusing his powers and the power dynamic for his, his, his own personal gratification, it just slows him down and then also lying about it too. Just does not look good for him. Next up is, I'm pretty sure that is Calvin Coolidge. I should know all this stuff much better. But you know, is that Coolidge? Yes, that is. Just there's a sepia and say black and white. So Coolidge, I gotta say, um, as I say, he did have some issues, but he's just a, um, he just isn't pretty good. Um, Cyan Cow, all that. Um, let's see. He was a small government conservative, dry sense of humor. Okay. Um, but still, um, let's just real quick read over his presidency. Because I know some about him, believe it or not, probably more than I do some of these others that I'm going to put in the not enough knowledge. So I kind of need to just refresh my mind, of, I should have refreshed my mind about all these ahead of time, but hey, this gives me a good time to chat with you guys, talking about the presidencies and all that, um, let's see, I could have done this as a live stream too, but this was easy, hmm. let's see, um, ooh, some exclusions, Im with the Immigration Act 1924, ah, uh, but he did, um, Let's see. Oh, he vetoed it. Okay, never mind. It was a bill that supported um, World War I veterans' compensation. Yeah, he did not sign that. He vetoed it. The past, despite that. Okay, that's not good. Um, and so he was present during the Roaring Twenties. You know, it was like, you no. Know, let's see. Uh, ju -ju -ju. Okay, he did do tax cuts, but depending on how the, the cuts were done, okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, the way he did tax cuts was cutting tax on the poor, not on the rich. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, 
He did increase federal spending, okay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, he opposed farm subsidies. Um, yeah, the, okay. okay, he did not really fight for civil rights, but he didn't fight against them, so that's good. Spoke in favor, that's good. Um, he apparently he repeatedly called for laws to make lynching a federal crime, which I think finally has happened. Yeah, um, he, he was a president when Indians were granted citizenship, he actually signed that, okay. You know what, um, he probably could have been better, but you know what, Coolidge is an alright guy, um, there's a few things about him, he's going up to B tier, um, there's a few things I don't agree with, but you know what, that's alright, I'm making them as a trend scene based on what I quickly read there, yeah, and I had a fa base knowledge anyhow. So next up is... Herbert Hoover. Now, where do I begin? It's not Hoover's fault the Great Depression happened. In fact, probably Coolidge, Harding, had, and maybe even worse, but Coolidge and Harding were probably more at fault than Hoover. Um, but the United States was not the only place that suffered during the Great Depression. Hoover was just president when it happened. But, and he did try stuff, but kind of like um, Buchanan, he just didn't try enough. But he still did, I think, a better job in addressing the crisis than Buchanan did. And for that alone, he deserves detail. Because while he probably could have done a much better job, he still did a decent enough job. He actually tried to do stuff. So he's, he wasn't necessarily a failure, per se. Um, he then shook his responsibility. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the main thing I got to say. Next up is... Um, the, in, let's see, um, that, that, Andrew Jackson, I just want to make sure I get the right guy, um, no, no, not that, is, no, is that William Henry Harrison? I think that's William Henry Harrison, mm. it's hard, um, Okay, and uh, that looks like him. I, I, man, that's tough that I can't identify. I just want to make sure I have the right president. Okay, Andrew Jackson is down later. That came, okay, so one of the presidents who pictures in black and white. I have a listing of the presidents right here to make sure I get the right ones. Okay, that that must be William Henry Harrison, because there's none, no other president with face. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait a second. Is that John Tyler? That might be John Tyler. You know what? I'm gonna come back to him. So Ike, can I go that high for Eisenhower? Oh, it's very easy to do. But is that the bias of him being, you know, the general who, who Supreme Allied Commander Europe during World War Two? Is that my bias for that sewing in? Um, yeah. Um, but he also, just talking about some other things, he spoke out against the military industrial complex, a very important thing. Um, he also, he led, he led the U.S. during the Korean War, um, then he did he also was president when it ended so saw a successful peace negotiation. Um it's just hard I mean, he was president in the fifties, well it wasn't the best for um for civil rights, the beginning of the civil rights movement. I mean, he did have the one hundred and first airborne. The people who literally parachuted in for Normandy, among others, but that group, that unit, helped defend the the um, students who were being integrated into Little Rock High School um, during that, um, he was involved with that, he defended them, you know. He nationalized the Arkansas National Guard so they wouldn't fight the federal troops. So, I mean, he had, like, sure, maybe on certain issues he probably could have taken a more hard stance, especially for civil rights, but for his time and what he did, I think he did a pretty good job. He um, kept the Truman Arrow policy of desegregation for the military. Um, he, and of course, 
Granted, Domino Theory was also started more on the Truman with the Truman Doctrine. He did continue that, so there's that. Um, but he, while well, kind of got us into Vietnam, he's not really the one responsible for that, per se. And that came later when we fully got Vietnam in. We can blame the French for Vietnam if we would like. Or later, for example, we'll talk about later. Um, but anyhow, so Eisenhower, he has to be in A tier. There's just too much to like about him. Now, next up is... Yep, that's Taft. I just want to double check that is Taft. Some of them presidents with nice mustaches. So, is that Taft? It looks like Taft. Uh, why do I always doubt myself with these? But yeah, so up next is... I just want to make sure there's none that looks more like Taft. Okay. Yep, that is Taft there. And so where do I put Taft? Well, he's at least B tier for me. Um, I took a course on the presidency and we read about... It was a book about both Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, T. Roosevelt, and about, about Taft. And I gotta say, those are probably two of my top two presidents. Um, well, maybe not top two. Now, do I go all the way up to B tier for him? Hard to say. Um, Taft's, Taft, he never really wanted to be president. Probably why he, I think, rolled the office pretty well. Um, his goal was to be on the Supreme Court, which he later did, making him the only president to swell in a future United States president. So he did eventually get what he wanted. He was also Governor General of the Philippines, and by all accounts, he was probably the best Governor General they had before they were able to elect their, before their independence and all that. Or, or at least Commonwealth status, or semi-quasi-independence. Um, but he, you know, he, he created a um, le local legislature for the Philippines granted as Governor General his, well, his whatever he said was final um, and the legislature was predominantly dominated by by the rich Filipinos but still he made an effort to include locals on the island in the island government so there is something to be said about he did a good job there but again this is his time as presidency so do I go all the way up to A tier with him or do I leave him at B tier you know what is very hard to say for sure about essentially what to do there, but if anyone deserves to be bumped up to A tier, it is probably Taft. And I mean, he actually did more trust busting, busting up monopolies and all that than Theodore Roosevelt did. So that is pretty impressive though. Um, so yeah, he's going up to A tier. He's an A tier president for me. Next up is Mil Mil yeah, Filmo. Sorry, not enough knowledge. I don't feel like going through. Okay, next up is Gerald Ford. So I actually, one of my professors, favorite president is by all accounts is Gerald Ford. Um, but for me, okay, let's see. When I think Gerald Ford, what do I think? Pardoning Nixon. No, I think that was probably the wisest move. But the fact that is the only, the only thing I can talk about him for, yeah. Now, I, he doesn't deserve detail in my account. He doesn't seem like he did that bad of a job or abused anything. So he gets C2 and you know what, I'm bumping up cards to C2. But he wasn't the best as president, he did his best and he meant well. Next up is Grant. And I gotta say, I'm also biased for Grant, same reason why I'm biased for Eisenhower. Led the Union Army's well later on and during the Civil War, but by all accounts, he was probably the most successful Union general. Um, well, maybe Sherman was pretty successful, and even Sheldon, too, and there's a few others as well. Um, oh, I've, what was his name? The Rock of Chickamauga. He was an, an, another excellent one, too. Um, I forget his actual name, but he was another excellent general. Most of the best generals in the Union Army were on the West during the Civil War, in my opinion. And they rose through the ranks. They didn't start there in the beginning. But Grant, um... So, we're going to start him in C tier. So, historians have given Grant a very low rating as president for many, many years. It's only more recently that they started doing much more and giving him higher ranking. And by account, he defeated the first Ku Klux Klan. He did that. That alone makes him B tier. Um, but he was rocked by numerous scandals. Um, in all honesty, as president, he wasn't. He was a better general than he was a politician. There's no. There's no doubt about that, but he 
while I would so love to put him in nature like I did Eisenhower, he just can't get up there because he just surrounded himself with the wrong people. He basically made poor choices of his advisors. But except for that, everything else by his person was solid. He stood up for civil rights. He defended African Americans, or more specifically, the newly freed men of the South. He defeated the first Ku Klux Klan. He he led pretty. He did a good job leading Reconstruction. In other words, maybe who knows how well we're gonna say how well Lincoln would have done. But you know what? I think Grant did it as good of a job as he could have. And I mean, defeating domestic terrorism is always a plus, especially white supremacist domestic terror. Which more presidents would do that? Okay, next up is Harding. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, Coolidge, I knew stuff about. Harding, I just don't know enough about. Plus, he had a few scandals as well. Um, so there's that. Next up is, I'm pretty sure that is Benjamin Harrison. And you know what? I, in, I think it was fourth grade, I actually did a report on Benjamin Harrison. Grandson of William Henry Harrison, that will make him... The, was it great? Yeah, either great grandson or great great grandson of a person who signed the Declaration of Independence, which is pretty impressive. Great grandson of Benjamin Harrison. His great grandfather was Benjamin Harrison, signed the Declaration of Independence, all that. So he has that going for him. Um, let's see, but there's some other things have to look at. I mean, we can't just rank him that high on that. So there is that, um, let's see, I'm just looking up just a few things about him, just to see, um, civil service reform and pensions, okay, um, merit system as opposed to the sports system, very good, Harrison, very good, I like that, um, let's see, let's see, he, oh, this is probably important, he appointed Theodore Roosevelt to the Civil Service Commission. Granted, he did not do much more, but he he basically helped Roosevelt get where he become, and for that alone is good on Harrison. That deserves him at least at least C tier. Uh, but a minute, I may be showing my biases a little bit for other favorite presidents, but the fact that he helped make it possible for a future president to climb the ladder is, I think, very very important. Um, let's see. Oh, he, he championed and enacted a law that saw no um, additional pensions provided to disabled civil war vets. I mean, that is a very good. Um, and it actually depleted a penalty and chopped some federal budget surplus. I just like how that's worded. Um, hmm. Let's see. So there. Okay. Yeah, sorry about this, I'm just reading, um, let's see, antitrust, okay, let's see what he had to do for our antitrust team now, please, um, let's see, yeah, did not reinforce the, the Sherman Act, but at least, you know, he, it was passed and he signed it into law, um, let's see, yeah, let's see, oh, he, he, he was part of a block, Attempted to pass civil rights legislation, um, but uh, by my reckoning here, it didn't get passed, but he did attempt. Oh, began some process for land reclamation and you no know, preservation, all that. Okay, okay. Let's see. He was president during the Wounded Knee Mass. That's not the best. Um, yeah. His policy was to, to encourage assimilation. Okay. And not the best. His Native American policy was, again, not the best. So, And then his foreign policy. But we're not getting foreign policy for this for these presidents. But there we go. He sees to only because he helped place Theodore Roosevelt on the upward trend. So next up is Andrew Jackson. I would like to put him at F2 because, I mean, he, I mean, he's the reason why the, the chair of tears happened. He, he, well, it was more to say a Georgia that day at the time, but 
he did nothing to enforce the Supreme Court's ruling that ruled in favor of the the, the Cherokee. But he also did a lot of stuff. Um, the increase the increased pop. Um, basically, um, making the president more important to the not necessarily more important to people, but making people mo- making people more likely to vote. Um, a popularly elected president. He did, even a populist. Um, but the fact that he was one of the first presidents, I would say probably since Washington, to truly be, I would say, in some ways, elected by the people and not by the part that party elites and all that, that does deserve him a D tier. And and by all accounts, he was a fairly successful president. Um, I just because of a few other things in this presidency, I can't put him in F tier, but I would so want to put him in F tier. You know what? I he still he did some good. You know, he did some good, especially for expanding democracy and all that. But the trail tiers keep keeps him from being any higher than D. Thomas Jefferson, yeah, he's B tier. I do have some problems with him being. First of all, he wrote the lines "All men are created equal." He wrote things hypocritical slavery. Yet he never freed his slaves. Even on his death, he did not free his slaves. But that's not him as president. He bought Louisiana. You know. He was president during that. He, he, he was the president who called for, who basically authorized the Lewis and Clark expedition. He did so much. It's just the, the slight hypocriticalness of him prevents him from being A tier or even S tier. I'm reserving the S tier for a few select presidents. But he would be higher if it were not for that. And he had saved as president, so he could have lived up. To what he wrote when he was president, but he just did. But he's a fine father, so he, he deserves B too. Next up is an Adams and John Adams, and you know what? Um, B too as well. Again, he he did have the slavery issue of Jefferson, um, founding fathers and all that, so also good. But one thing, the Alien and Sedition Act. I'm sorry, but yeah, passing a law to criticize the government. After the First Amendment had already been ratified, yeah, yeah. If you're making criticism of the government and they go, I'm not a big fan of that. But other than that, I s- and he had some problems, but he did so much for the country. And I mean, he's he revived the U.S. Navy. He did a bunch of good stuff. Um, quasi war was president doing that too. So he has to be beaten because of all the good he's done. Just the Alien Sedition Act puts him down to be killed, not a tier. Next up is this person. Should I even say his name? Yeah, I have to say his name. Andrew Johnson. F tier. First president impeach. Granted, he was in chapter guy, give him that, but he is F tier beyond a doubt. He's just terrible. He was soft on reconstruction. He fought with Congress. He he just was a terrible, terrible president in my opinion. Um he got nothing done. Um, his softness on Reconstruction probably made it made the Republicans in Congress, or the, especially the radical Republicans in Congress, back when Republicans were progressives, by the way, they're no longer, but that's a whole other topic. But they probably pushed harder and back made the Reconstruction more harsh because Johnson was too soft. So there was that. Next up is JFK. Well, if we were ranking him based on his family and RFK, oh man, he would go up higher. Um, but yeah, JFK, who knows how what would have happened if he wasn't assassinated. But his, the legacy of him, he basically became a martyr. Would Johnson have successfully pushed the Civil Rights Act through Congress if he wasn't appealing to the legacy of JFK? JFK... Despite some of his faults, um, and he did have several, um, substance abuse, infidelity, while he was president, as I understand, especially for the infidelity, um, does not make him a tier, but he was just, he's, he was an inspiring figure. That alone, he inspired people when he was president. You no, know, ask not what you can, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I mean, that's more of a modern day Republican thing than Democrat thing. And he was a Democrat back then when the parties were much more similar. But that was also the kind of mentality is what can you do to help your country out? Rather than what can your country do to help you? And in some ways, 
well, the government is supposed to help the citizens, but maybe another way you could interpret that is just inspire all those. I mean, there's so many ways, but he was just an inspiring president. That alone makes him B tier. And probably some of my bias is showing. Now we have a guy with a nice big beer, and I think that's Garfield. Yeah, sorry Garfield, um, but yeah, not enough knowledge. Lyndon Baines Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson. And not, pretty much another character of the president, but you know what? He may have gotten us in Vietnam, um, but he deserves B tier. He did so much. He advanced lots of civil rights legislation. A lot of it, of course, is building off of, of, of Kennedy's, but he is the president who doing it. He's the one who signed the legislation. He continued essentially Kennedy's legacy. I'm using legacy specifically for a reason. And that alone makes him B tier. He also um, did much other stuff to that for helping America as a whole. And I think he was just overall, despite his problems, a good president. And of course, advancing civil rights is very important, in my opinion. So that just elevates any president, really, advancing civil rights and equality under the law. Next up is Lincoln. And you know what? He's going to be my first president on SQ. He led the nation through the American Civil War successfully. He... Did, well, he did do some stuff like um, a habeas corpus, a huge black spot on his presidency. But the first time was like, it is constitutional. It's the first time he didn't ask Congress's approval. And the way the Constitution is worded, it does imply that Congress is the only one that can do it, not the president. But we got to give Lincoln some credit. He had to do it. You know why? Because if he didn't do it, Congress probably wouldn't have been able to convene she suspended habeas corpus during the rebellion, so that is something we have to consider. And I've read several books, um, he, he used a telegraph. Now maybe in some ways, maybe he could have been a bit more hands off for leading the troops, leading the military, but I mean, he invested himself. He wanted to be a leader, and he certainly was a leader. Um, his, his second inaugural address is well known. Gettysburg Address, he wasn't even supposed to be the highlight speaker, but you know what? Everyone afterwards talked about his show. By all accounts, the Gettysburg Address is one of the shortest speeches a president has ever given, and it's going to be remembered forever. And the other guy who was supposed to speak, do we remember his name? Do we remember what he said? No, but we remember Lincoln. He was inspiring. He was a leader. He is my S well, probably going to be one of my Two, maybe three. I still haven't figured that out yet. But next up, uh, okay, um, which president is that? Oh, wait, that's Benjamin. Wait, that's Benjamin Harrison. I saw I talked about Benjamin Harrison already. Then who did it? Okay, well, that's Grover Cleveland, though. That's also. I thought that was Harrison. That's Benjamin Harrison. Okay, everything I said when I talked about this guy, yeah, that's about this guy. Then Hayes! That's Hayes. Oh man. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Yeah, um, Hayes is D2. I can't believe I mix those two presents up, them and their beards. But, um, Hayes, I mean, if there was any election that was fraudulent, it was probably Hayes' election. So yeah, um, there's a reason why he has the nickname Rutherford B. Hayes. So yeah, 1876, the centennial of the U.S. is probably not the best election we ever had. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna put him as the F2 only because of his legacy is pretty much tarnished by that election. It was decided by a commission, not by Congress, not by the courts, by a commission that was stacked in the favor of his party by one vote. And, to get him elected, the agreement was, Reconstruction would end. Reconstruction ended, and guess what happened? Civil rights got rolled back. Jim Crow came into effect. So, yeah. Okay. Now that that's out of the way. James Madison, Founding Father, at least be killed. There's no doubt about that. Founding Fathers do deserve that much. Now, is he going to Ohio? Um, let me... Let's see, fourth president, father of the constitution, but that was not him as president. 
Red House, um, let's see, he had political opposition, he was present during World of 1812, um, okay, okay, uh, where did he stand, he led the country during World of 1812, which was a stalemate, you know what, he's a fine father B2, um, okay, this guy, um, Man, all these presidents with the black and white photos. And he's gonna be one of these ineffectual ones. Oh wait, McKinley! Spanish American War. Um Vice President was was Roosevelt and that alone boots him up. Um But does he really is he does he really deserve to be that high or does do I need to bump him down? McKinley was assassinated, um Let's see, um, he kept the nation on the go, he raised protectionist tariffs, I'm kind of neutral on tariffs, sometimes I think they're a good idea, sometimes I think they're not, um, so there's that, um, let's see, I don't need to read about his cabinet, um, wait, was he the one who was, um, Teapot Dome? I just wondering Spanish American War um let's see kinda like the War of eighteen twelve, just a bunch of war hawks in Congress. Um boom we can't I don't think he really led the country during it like Lincoln did the Civil War or World of, uh, FDR did World War Two. Um Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. He pursued the next station of Hawaii. Um, that's a whole mess there, um, let's see, um, where was this, oh, that's the annexation Hawaii, um, expanded overseas influence, yeah, he was president during the Boxer Rebellion, which was a event in China, um, yeah, um, but again, Okay, civil rights, let's see, um, he spoke uh, out against lynching, um, his party was always ending sectionalism, some low-level appointments, um, yeah, apparently he did not do much, uh, oh yeah, he was president when, um, white supremacists took all, basically could in Wilmington, um, he refused to do anything about it, so there's that, um, yeah. So, by all accounts, he could have done better, but he was the president that led the way for, who was the president for T. Roosevelt's vice presidency, so that alone prevents him from being after you. Next up, is that Franklin Pierce? Uh, no, no, that's not Franklin Pierce. Who's that guy? No, well, this is Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce is going there. I don't know enough about him. Uh, oh, James Monroe. Monroe Doctrine. And you know what? The Monroe Doctrine was a pretty sensible doctrine, for especially for a while. Um, though his secretary of state was more, did more for it than he did. Um, Good name of his Secretary of State, but he was you no know, founding father. He's up there. Monroe Doctrine. I yep, don't colonize, don't do any for the colonization in America. Not a bad policy. And so he goes there. Ah oh, man. So Nixon. Corruption. Need I say more? 
He's not as bad as I would say Buchanan or as it was <clears throat> somebody else who I decided to put into recent. Um, but um, yeah, his vice, his first vice president, Spiro Agnew, resigned for a whole separate scandal. I mean, he just was not the best. Sure, he did a few good things, but. Watergate has forever overshadowed him making the first president to resign. And if he hadn't resigned, he would have been the first president to be impeached and removed. There's no doubt about that. So now we have the old H.W. Bush. And where do I put him? Well, he was president after... After Reagan. I do have some thoughts on Reagan. Um, but you know what? Like his son, he goes in C tier. I just... I know enough about him and his legacy, but I really don't care enough about it to go into detail. FDR, S tier. I do have some qualms with him, namely Japanese internment, but the New Deal legislation was important. It helped the United States recover from the Great Depression, though, again, nothing really helped us recover more than World War II. There's no doubt about that, but he led us through World War II. Um, he was just an important figure. He has to be as to There's no doubt about that. Would the um, Japanese internment bump him down? Maybe. But he did so much more good that I it can't justify bumping him down. It's a black mark on his person, just like um, revoking habeas corpus, or suspending habeas corpus was for Lincoln without congressional approval. It's black marks on the presidencies, but those are the black marks. But they did so much good for the country, so much positive impact. Even today, the New Deal is, has a lasting effect. Social Security, with so many Medicaid, uh, Medicare, all that, um, so much more. Um, hey, we can even just talk about how many national is parks, state parks, and even the county and local parks only exist because this is a very conservation call. The Blue Ridge Parkway probably wouldn't be able to drive without some of their work. Um, many national parks would probably not exist. Um, one of the forest preserves new in the county where I live in Illinois has a, civil, a CCC um, shelter in it, and it's just there. It's a forest preserve. It's not. It's not a national thing anyhow. There's so much works progress administration. He just did so much good for the country. He's S tier presidency. Okay, next up is another black and white president. Um, so let's see. Um, this is early. Um, so I have to portrait Polk. You know what? He's a BTO president. Um, he he um, was president for many years. Oh, and uh, oh, for one term, and he did one term. He did everything he set out to accomplish. Um, he prevented the U.S. and the British Empire from fighting over the Oregon territory. Um, so for the the forty ninth parallel. Um, by all accounts, he's a B two president. Not much more to say. Next up, we have is that Quincy Adams. Okay. Um, this is the wrong Quincy Adams. There we go. Um. I think that is Quincy Adams. Yeah, his portrait, not his fo photograph. Uh, pretty sure that's Quincy Adams. So yeah, John Quincy Adams, son of John Adams. He actually was pres. Uh, we served in the House after being president. The only one of the few presidents to do so. In fact, I think the only one. But all accounts, I think he had a pretty good presidency. Um, I'm just looking up his stuff. Um. Investments in so national a national university a national he conference of investment to the country, um. Yes. Okay, roads. Hmm, seems like a favorite infrastructure. Um. Okay. <laughs> Southerners feared he was an abolitionist. That's a that's a good vote of confidence. Um, lots of his proposals, however, were defeated in in Congress. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, infrastructure alone makes him beat you. 
Okay. So there's not too much more to say. I'm not gonna put him all the way up in A tier, but he's a B tier president for sure. Reagan. Where do I put Reagan? D. He did some good stuff, but some of his legacies of his policies, the war on drugs for one, was very disproportionate against uh, African Americans, especially those in urban communities. Um, what else do I say? He did good, but he just, I just don't care for him. His legacy is not as solid as I think it should be. Sure, he was popular, movie star and all that, but that alone does not benefit him in my ranking. Um, and the legacy of, of his policies on the Republican Party is what led to Trump. If I was ranking Trump on here, he would be F bad and gotta be honest. He's too recent to actually rank. We have not seen the legacy, the out, the effects of his presidency yet, so we can't, so we can't in all good faith rank him. Same thing with Obama and Biden, we just can't rank them yet. So, we're gonna move on. Yeah, I'm putting Reagan in detail. That's really revealing my personal biases. Next up is Zachary Taylor. Hero of the Mexican American War. Yeah, he led it. President before Fillmore. Fact is, I have to look up some things about him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Let's see, looking at his presidency. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay. You said, um, wanted a wide range of people in his cabinet, okay. Yeah, was president doing when the Department of the Interior was established by the sound of things. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Inauguration, uh, sectional crisis again. This was all during the lead up to the Civil War. Okay. He opposed the expansion of the slavery, but he was a slave war, no. Um, interesting, as a threat of Southern Secession grew, he sided increasingly with anti-slavery nose nose. Interesting. Interesting, um. Okay. Great, he did sidestep the, the issue with, um, the with slavery in California just by saying, California, become a state, you guys decide. So there's that, um... Okay. Yeah. I don't... There's some stuff about him, but you know what? See. The C tier, he... Didn't do enough, but, um... Clay was the one behind Compromise of 1850, not him, so there's that. Okay. And I think, did he? Yeah, he died in 1950, so yeah, that's not on him. So he, see, mid to the road. Roosevelt, oh man. Where do I put both Roosevelt's nest here or Theodore down below? You know what? He has to be in nest here for me as well. So I might actually have four presidents in nest here. So my biases were going plain fact, but one, trust busting. He did civil service reform. You no, know, i.e. stuff, you know, like, like his cousin, he worked, he worked to push forward policies that will help the average American. That alone is a good thing. I'm glad that he did do that stuff. Um, and also he's just a, probably my favorite president to read about and all that. Next up is Harry Truman. And you know what? A tier. Um, he did get us into Korea, but I got us out of it. And Korea was different than Vietnam. Much different than Vietnam. 
I could do a whole separate video on that. Um, but the main thing about Truman is the bums. There's no doubt about that. It was a tough decision. It is, was it the best decision? I don't know, but I think it was the only decision. Because if he didn't use the bums, would we have known how bad they were? How, why we should never, ever use them again? No, seriously. If not understanding the deadly and devastating consequences of the atomic bombs, would mutually assured destruction as a doctrine that prevented war between the Soviets and the Americans ever develop? Hard to say. That alone is very, very important to consider. By using the bombs, he showed why we should never use them. So fortunately it had to happen, but it kind of didn't. His, uh, and his Truman Doctrine was not that great. But the fact is, that consequential decision probably saved millions of American lives in the invasion of Japan if Okinawa and Iwo Jima were anything to go by. And probably saved thousands, bil billions, quadrillions of lives over the course of human history simply by showing us why atomic bombs should never be used again. Next up is, I want to make sure I get this guy right, John Tyler. Oh, first vice president to become president, he essentially did it before it was established. It was kind of up in the air with not acting in that. Yeah, I'm sorry, but um, I don't really know, know, and he fought with everyone. But uh, he's D2. No, he, yeah, he's D2. He doesn't deserve F2. Now, next up is Van Buren. So, the interesting fact about him, his first language was Dutch. He was born to a family of Dutch, well, um, actually, I think his great-grandfather maybe? But essentially a Dutch community that still spoke Dutch, had a tradition to speaking English yet. So he was the first president to not speak English as a native language. And, by all accounts, the only president not to do so. so Interesting fact there. But other than that, I don't know that much about him. Like, literally, that's like all I know about him, so not enough knowledge. It's not even like I have an inkling now, so I need to do a quick research to refresh my mind. No. Washington. He is also an S2 president, no doubt about that. In fact, he's number one S2. Oh, he, the first president, he set the expectations of what should be president. He showed how to basically transfer power peacefully. Founding father, I mean, there's no, I mean, to argue why he should be anything other than S2 is pointless. And I will say this, unlike some founding fathers who own slaves, he did have his slaves freed upon, in his will, though not upon his death, but upon the death of his wife, Martha Washington. Now, if she had died first, it probably would have been his death, but at least he had his slaves freed on his death. And back then, that's the best you could have hoped for. And I don't hold that against him because in some ways you gotta judge them for the values of the time. And based on the values of the time, what he did was actually, you no, know, not just socially acceptable, but probably on the more progressive end of socially acceptable. And it was basically what he could have done. Maybe sooner would have been more progressive in terms of benefit civil rights and equality and all that. But he did probably the best for the time, especially for living in Virginia. Okay, so that is. The last president I haven't gotten to yet before I get to my last one I'm going to be talking about. Um, no, which president was this again? Not either. That might have been William Henry Harrison. Where is he now? I just need to look at his picture again. You know what? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. But. I'm putting him under two reasons, not enough knowledge. Only because 30 days in office? Yeah, how can I judge his presidency when he had no chance to be president? Last, but not least, and certainly for the worst, Woodrow Wilson. FTO. I have no qualms about doing that. At all. In fact, um, the only president worse than him is going to be Buchanan. <laughs> And that's only because Buchanan was so ineffectual, he didn't try anything to stop the Civil War. But Wilson, 
Where do I begin with Sonyism interventionism? Oh, we are still doing with Sony interventionism to this day. Why do you think we were in Afghanistan? Why are we in a war in Iraq? Why were we in any country? It's because of Wilson, more or less. Vietnam, Wilson, and not just because it was only interventionism, but... No, his 14 points, like I gotta say, were pretty idealistic and not bad. The problem is, you only apply to your beings. I'm not, seriously. Um, I read in a, a book that actually, um, Who Became Ho Chi Minh actually did attend the Versailles Peace Conference as this kind of a, you know, person who was part of the, Spanish, the French Empire, not really representing anything, but... It did try to make its case to Wilson, but got nowhere. So, who knows how things would have been prevented, but that's just odd ball speculation. I still need to find primary source to back that up too. So there is that. But, no, self-determination. He was all in favor for that. For Europeans. The Slovak, Slavs, um, Czechs, Bohemians, Romanians, all those people. And, and, and all fine Poles. All that he was fine. No, he didn't really get self-determination to who should we talk about. Puerto Ricans. Um, um, the American Samoans, or should I say Samoans, um, oh, Mariana Islanders, I forget, uh, Chin Chinon, Chamoa, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably butchering it, um, H Hawaiians, like, Native Americans even, he just, it only really applied to Europeans, um, he re, he re, Segregated the federal government. Yeah, so one of the few places where African Americans were guaranteed non-segregated employment, he stripped away. What else can I complain about him about? Um, oh, there's so much, so much. And I'm trying to find some good spicy ones too to just throw out there. Uh, huh. Oh, another alien sedition acts, of course. So that doesn't help him. Oh, yeah, the birth of a nation, you know, the racist one. Because it's actually a non-racist one that just depicts racism, but isn't racist in itself. Yeah, he had a screen in the White House and it's quoted in it. He, and he favorably quotes it, and I quote shown in the film. Yeah, yeah, there's a reason why Wilson is probably... The only president worse than him is Buchanan. That's only because Buchanan was so in... in ineffective as president, did nothing to stop the Civil War. In fact, you know what? This makes Wilson even worse. And as a cynical historian goes, Wilson? Or however he says it. Um, but I'm gonna link his video about Wilson. Really enlighten me on Wilson. Yeah. Wilson is the worst president, my lowest ranked president in, well, US history. Who knows what's gonna happen as this list changes, as recency bias is no longer in effect. But yeah, that is where I'm going to end this video. I hope you did enjoy it um, and learn something all, along the way. But also, if you want to do this um, to this, I'll be sure to link it down below. And feel free to share with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Discord, Reddit. Um, email it to me. I, at this point, who cares? Just feel free, feel free to share it anywhere you want. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, follow, upvote. Um, promote, comment, all that stuff YouTube is always asking, all that. You know, check the stuff down below. Um, and I would like to again extend a thank you for watching this extremely long video. I probably won't be doing this many long videos in the future, but they may p pop up from time to time, especially if I'm gaming. Um, but again, thank you for watching, and as always, have a day, ignite, wherever y'all. Have a good one. Bye!